Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. This episode is about a major lunar standstill. It's winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, and that means that the moon rides very high in the sky because the moon does the opposite of what the sun does. The sun rides very low in the sky in the winter and the moon very high. But tonight, the moon is 77 degrees above the horizon. I've never seen it that high. And in this episode, I'm going to try to explain to you why. Before I attempt to explain to y'all Major Lunar Standstill, I have an announcement to make. I've been studying the moon for over two years now because I participated in a lunar observing program and I failed the first time. <laughs> and I had to redo the entire program. And I mentioned in an earlier episode that I was waiting to see if I would get my certificate of completion from the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada who sponsors this observing program. And I'm happy to announce that I did indeed receive my certificate of completion and here it is explore the moon telescope edition and they also gave me this beautiful pen now on to major lunar standstill the moon goes through an 18.6 year cycle that last ended in 2006 and will culminate again in January 2025 and it's called Major Lunar Standstill or Lunistis. The 18.6 year cycle is caused by the precession of the plane of the moon's orbit caused by the sun's gravity. The moon maintains a 5.1 degree tilt relative to the ecliptic, which is the apparent path of the sun, the moon, and the planets across the sky. At the peak of this cycle, the moon's declination, and declination means latitude in the sky, swings from negative 28.8 degrees to positive 28.8 degrees each month. Each month from 2023 to 2026, the moon can be seen rising and setting more northerly and also more southerly than the solar extremes. And I witnessed this the other night when I was up extremely late and the waxing gibbous moon set well north of where the sun sets here on the summer solstice. During the lunar standstill, the moon will transit the meridian. And that means the imaginary line in the sky that goes from north to south monthly with altitudes which are higher in the sky than the summer sun. And that's the short answer as to why the moon is so incredibly high this evening. It was so high in the sky this evening because I'm filming this in February 2024, just before the culmination of the major lunar standstill, which will culminate January 2025. The moon's 18.6 year cycle is marked most famously at Stonehenge in England and also at Chaco Culture National Monument in New Mexico at the Sun Dagger, which you cannot hike to. But what do I mean when I say the moon's orbit's plane precesses with an 18.6 year cycle? Well, the plane of the Earth's orbit around the sun is tilted 23.5 degrees, but as the Earth orbits the sun, that tilt never changes. And that's why Polaris is always in the same position night after night, more or less, from the same position on Earth. And I can demonstrate that with this globe of the Earth. The Earth rotates on its own axis once every 24 hours, and the axis is this imaginary line that runs straight through the middle of Earth, and that's what gives us night and day. And if you extend that imaginary line out of Earth at the North Pole, it points to the North Celestial Pole in the sky. The closest star to the North Celestial Pole is Polaris, the North Star. And if you go out night after night, Polaris appears to be in the same position, or relatively same. But the direction of sunrise and sunset changes throughout the year. On the summer solstice, the sun sets as far to the north as it will all year long. And on the winter solstice, the sun will set as far south as it will all year long. In addition, during the summer, the sun rides high in the sky while in the winter, the sun rides low in the sky. But the moon completes 
one orbit around the Earth in a little over 27 days. And that means that the direction of the rising and setting of the moon moves along the horizon in one full swing in one month. And because of the tilt of the moon's orbital plane in relation to our orbit around the sun, the outer extremes of the moon's monthly range of rising and setting are not the same as the extremes of the sun's yearly range of rising and setting. Because the moon does in one month what the sun does in a year. And the moon can be seen to rise and set more northerly and more southerly than the solar extremes. The change in sun rise and sunset direction is caused by the Earth's tilt of the plane in which we see the sun of 23.5 degrees. And this can be seen in this demonstration where the Earth is tilted with respect to the ecliptic. And the place where the sun rises and sets changes throughout the year. And these are not at all to scale. The diameter of the sun is over 100 times the diameter of the Earth. But just imagine this is much bigger. While the Earth is rotating on its own axis every 24 hours, it's also orbiting the sun every 365 days or so. And the Earth's orbital plane is tilted 23 and a half degrees to the ecliptic. That tilt never changes, and that's why Polaris is more or less in the same position night after night. But because of this orbit, where the sun rises and sets every day changes throughout the year. On the winter solstice, the sun will set as far south as it will all year long. On the summer solstice, it will set as far north as it will all year long. And it also rides high in the sky in the summer and low in the sky in the winter. And those are called the solar extremes. In the meantime, the sun's gravity causes the moon's orbital plane to not stay fixed. In other words, to precess with an 18.6 year cycle while still maintaining its 5.1 degree tilt relative to the ecliptic. Sometimes the moon is above the ecliptic and sometimes it's below the ecliptic. And that's why we don't have a lunar eclipse every month. So the most northerly and southerly rising and setting of the moon occurs every month at the peak of the 18.6 year cycle. And during the years 2023 to 2026, each month, the moon will rise and set more northerly and two weeks later, more southerly than the solar extremes. And each month, the moon will transit higher in the sky than the summer sun, and two weeks later, lower in the sky than the winter sun. And this is called the major lunar standstill. And that's why the moon's declination ranges each month between negative 28.8 and positive 28.8 degrees. And to see this in action on March 5th, 2024, if you got up at dawn, you did not see me because I could not get up that early, but you saw the waning crescent moon in the middle of Sagittarius at a declination of negative 29 degrees, six degrees south of the ecliptic, when usually the moon is high above Sagittarius's teapot, much farther north. So I hope my explanation was clear and that now you understand why the moon is so high in the sky and two weeks later so low in the sky. If the sky is clear tonight, get outside and check out for the location of the moon. Is it higher than you've ever seen it or lower than you've ever seen it? That's the moon's 18.6 year cycle in action, a major lunar standstill. That's it for now. I'll see y'all soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.